What's up everybody, Magnus here, back with another video for you guys. Today we're doing my take on a historical Viking Age wallet design that was found at the Burka Dig in Sweden, so let's have a look. But before we have a look, remember that you can find all the artwork and patterns for my projects on my website and my Etsy shop, links in the description down below. You can also find the same patterns and artwork month to month on my Patreon account, so have a look at that. And of course, make sure you check out my shirt designs, links in the down below box place, and they'll be also, they're everywhere, there's, there's links everywhere, really. I should uh, take two. Today's video is brought to you by Lonsdale Leather, where you can find all sorts of hardware, tools, supplies, and of course, leather. Make sure you check them out in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Check out their website, lonsdaleleather.com. Links in the description down below. For this project, you're going to want to use something a little thinner, maybe in a two ounce. A goat hide would be perfect. I'm using some deer here, which is a little stretchy, but as long as you know that going into your project, you'll be fine. One thing you have to think about when you're dealing with deer hide or anything that's got a little bit of stretch to it is how you're gonna cut it. So when I'm grabbing the outside edge and pulling it away as I cut the piece, that's helping me make sure that I don't bunch up the leather when I'm cutting it and it makes the lines a lot nicer. Most of the pieces of this pattern have these holes on it in order to situate your cuts. Because you're going to be weaving narrower pieces of leather into these pieces, it's a lot easier just to mark where you want to cut the line with these light dots and then cut that line either with a knife or, like what I found, a chisel that matches the same distance. The chisel I found wasn't perfect, but it was almost there. I was a little bit worried about those dots showing up, but they kind of blended away right away. This was totally just something I was experimenting with when I decided to do this project. I was trying to figure out the fastest way to do these lines, and so I picked up this chisel. If you don't have a chisel, don't worry about it. You can easily cut these lines. But if you are going to do a bunch of these, you may want to think about picking up a chisel that will make the perfect cut for you. Another thing I did with this pattern is that the lines on the pattern are only half the lines. So once I've got all these in there, I'm going to double up on all those lines by doing a secondary chisel cut in between, like I'm doing here, all the other lines. You don't have to do this, but if I wanted my weave to look as square as possible and not long and rectangular, I needed to just get more lines in there to weave through. I used my stitching pony at the beginning of this project. I thought it would be good to film with and it'll make it a lot easier. It really didn't make it easier at all. The filming of it was easier, but the actual process of doing this weave wasn't really helped much by a stitching pony. So don't worry about it too much. Doing it just like I'm doing it here, flat on the tabletop, was just as fast and worked just as well. An alternative to using single strips of flat leather lace would be to take some thinner leather and cut a single wide strip into three strips, but just keep them connected at one end. That way they're all locked in at one end, and then those three strips separate and do the weave, and then you have those three loose ends at the other side that you can glue down. To make this weave look as nice as possible, when you get to either end, you're either going to have two small cuts to weave two of your laces in, or one like here, to weave one of your laces in. And that'll make it look better overall, and you also won't have that loose opening at either end. You can either hand stitch or machine stitch this project. I decided to do a little bit of both so you guys can see both options. I'm using some double-sided tape here just so I can get my edge stuck down and rolled in order to punch it and hand stitch it. I'm going to use my stitching pony and I'm also going to be showing you exactly how you should be doing those stitches to make sure they're nice and even when you're hand stitching them. Because a lot of people just weave in and out with no regard to which way their needles are going. You have to make sure that your needles are the same on every pass if you want your hand stitching to look good. Same thing here, we're just prepping the pocket area to make sure that we can get a nice rolled edge on it with, by using some double-sided tape.
All right, the key to hand stitching is making sure that your needles overlap the same way every time. So because I am overlapping my left needle over my right needle, you can see the angle of the thread is following the overlap. It's going from low right to high left. If you were to suddenly reverse those needles, that thread angle would change direction. So it'll look a little funny if you're looking at your stitch. I decided to go with crazy glue for this process. I haven't done this before and I was trying to think of an easy way to make sure all these ends stayed down. But crazy glue dries pretty hard so at the edges where there's glue I'm going to invert this pouch eventually and it got a little weird. So I might try something else but it certainly was easy to glue all these down I must say. Now I'm just marking around the pouch where I'm going to have my little loops that the lace is eventually going to go through. I did 24 on this initial version. It'll have less, 24 was a bit of an overkill, especially at the corners I had a little too much clutter. Because this is a prototype, and on top of that we're working with deer, which is a little stretchy. Every single time you glue a piece down, you should check to make sure all your edges are flush. So when you're punching holes for hand stitching, or if you're machine stitching it, you're not stitching off the edge and ruining your project. As you can see here, I initially had a double-sided tape failure. I was just trying to put everything together at once and then stitch it once. That didn't work, so I stitched the loops down first to one piece and then I stitched everything together a little further in to hide those initial stitches when I turned it inside out. Another problem I had is these loops are too heavy. They should have been two and a half, three ounce tops. I think there were four ounce and it just made it a little weird. It worked out in the end, but if I had a do-over I would have done something a little less. The loops certainly came in handy for turning it inside out, but really be careful. You don't want to tear them out of your piece. Yeah, so there's a few too many loops on this. It does look cool, but especially at the corner there, you can see unnecessary amount of loops. Time to put our lace in. We're just going to thread this lace all the way around the project, and then we're going to have to put on some kind of closure at the end. I love antler tips, so we're going to go with antler tips. I wasn't sure how well this clamp would work, but it worked out pretty good. Make sure you drill a small pilot hole first, and then go with your bigger holes. I really like how this bit cleans up hard edges on my drilled holes and makes it so things aren't scraping over them. Once we have those holes drilled, we just have to lace the antler tip onto the piece, knot it off, and then do a few finishing touches, and that's about it. Well, there you have it everybody that project was a lot of fun to do I'm sure a whole bunch of you guys can knock it out obviously make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video it really helps the channel grow subscribe for future videos and hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my content and of course until next time keep on being creative in whatever it is you do